So now that we're getting comfortable with equilibrium expressions, it's time to change things up a little bit. Let's look at this reaction, where I have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas turning into liquid water. Now we saw this reaction in the previous video, but we had the product as gaseous water. Earlier, we wrote the equilibrium expression for this reaction to look like this, which makes sense. Products over reactants, exponents come from the coefficients in the balanced equation. However, the correct equilibrium expression for this is actually this. KEQ equals one over the concentration of hydrogen squared times oxygen. Where did the water go? Well, here, water is a liquid. You can't measure the concentration of a liquid. There is no solute, there is no solvent. You can measure the concentration of aqueous substances, and you can also measure the concentration of gases because you can measure the moles and volume of a gas. There is no measuring the concentration of a liquid. So if you can't measure its concentration, you can't put it in your equilibrium expression. This is what is meant by a heterogeneous reaction, a reaction where you have different states of matter in the same reaction. You can't measure the concentrations of liquids. You can't measure the concentration of solids either. There are no solutes and no solvents. So when we write our equilibrium expressions, we only include aqueous solutions and gases. We never include solids and liquids in our equilibrium expressions. Let's look at a similar reaction, but there are some differences. First, I flipped it, so now the water is a reactant and the hydrogen and oxygen are products. And then I went back to a homogeneous process where all three substances are gases. We know that we can write the equilibrium expression in terms of concentration, but in this mixture of gases that we'll have, the partial pressure of each of the gases is proportional to the number of moles of gases present. As long as the gases are in the same volume container and in the same temperature, that will be true. If the partial pressure is proportional to the number of moles, the partial pressure will also be proportional to the concentration. So when dealing with gases, you can actually write an equilibrium expression in terms of pressure instead of concentration. For this reaction, it will look like this. We would say the equilibrium constant equals the partial pressure of hydrogen squared times the pressure of oxygen divided by the pressure of water squared. We do the same format, products over reactants, and the exponents come from the coefficients in the balanced equation. When we do this, however, we note that the equilibrium constant isn't based on concentration, it's based on pressure. So that's what that Kp symbol means. It's the constant based on pressure, not concentration. Now you can convert from a Kc value to a Kp value. You can convert from a equilibrium constant based on concentration to an equilibrium constant based on pressure. And it comes from the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. If you divide both sides by volume, then you're gonna cancel out the volume on the left and put moles over volume on the right. Well, moles over volume is concentration, right? Molarity is moles per liter. So you can rewrite the ideal gas law to say that pressure equals the concentration or the molarity of a gas times the ideal gas constant times the temperature. Now we have to be careful here. When we're using this, our concentration is gonna be in moles per liter. So we wanna make sure that we're using the gas constant that's in moles and liters, the 0.08206 value. And to convert the two, you can say that your equilibrium constant based on pressure equals the equilibrium constant based on concentration. And the conversion factor is gonna be RT the ideal gas constant, and check your units and make sure you're using the correct value, your temperature in Kelvin, and then you're gonna raise that to the delta N, the difference in the number of moles. So if I go back in this reaction, I'm starting with two moles of gas, and I'm ending with three moles of gas. So if I were starting with two moles of gas and ending with three moles of gas, my delta N would be one. So this would be my equilibrium constant based on concentration times the ideal gas constant expressed in moles and liters, our temperature in Kelvin, and delta N would be one. 